for the hot end, I will use Dragon Hot End Standard Flow. The high flow variant may be better, but from what I have read, the standard flow should be sufficient. Besides, the standard flow should be better for the multi-material printing. The problem is that my stepper motor shaft is 2mm too long and cannot be mounted properly. The stepper motor in the official BOM has a shaft length of 20mm. The one I brought also has a 20mm shaft, but they measure at a different point, so the shaft is 2mm too long. It may seem like I should drill a hole slightly deeper, but there is a filament part in the way, so that is not possible. I also thought about using 2mm motor spacer, but then the motor mounting screw will also need to be longer. So the most obvious solution would be to grind the shaft down by 2mm. I use water to cool down the shaft during grinding to prevent overheating the motor. This screw is for adjusting the meshing of the gear between this one and the other plastic gear. I brought an entire cartridge of clone BMG extruder because it is cheaper than buying a spare gear separately. The store ran out of M3 by 30 screw, so I brought the M3 by 35 instead and cutting them to 30. At first, I tried to use a plier to cut the screw, but the screw threads are distorted and I need to re tapping every time, so I switched to an angle grinder, which seems to cut cleaner. The gear should have a slight play and should not be fully tight against the pinion. Now apply some lubricating keys to the BMG bearing. Now I'm testing the feeding gear to see if it gripped the filament properly. And yes, as you can see, it's gripping the filament very well. Can 
And for the cable chain attachment, since I'm using a Panzer chain 3D printed cable chain, I will use the one for the Panzer chain. The motor I'm using is slightly longer than the standard one, so I have to drill a countersunk hole in the chain mounting for the screw to mount properly. Now for the Dragon hot end, the standard kit comes with a two method of mounting the hot end. The first one is the groove mount method, which is compatible with a V6 mounting style. And the second one which we will be using is the screw mounting, which mount using a four screw, which are stronger and more preferred in wall run design. In order to remove the groove mount adapter, you need to unscrew two of the small screw with the included hex wrench. Now mount the dragon hot end to the print head using four of the screw that was included in the dragon hot end kit. Do not tighten the screw yet because in the next step you will have to insert the PTFE into the opening which you may have to loosen the screw again. I still don't know where to use the thermal paste they include in the hot end kit. If anyone knows where to use it, please comment down below. Thank you. For the heater, I use a 24 volt 50 watt heater cartridge. My heater cartridge already come with a connector, but it's very small connector, so I will replace it with a better one before using. The afterburner 2 head use a 4010 hot end cooling fan and a 4020 blower for part cooling fan. Both of the fan should be a ball bearing type because it need to work in a high chamber temperatures. The clearance between the printed part and the fan is very small, so if your 3D printing has unsmooth surface, you may have to sand it down in order to fit perfectly. Now for the drive belt, when cutting the A and B belt to size, please make sure that both belts are cut to the same length. 
Otherwise, it may cause problem when tensioning the belt later on. The A belt and the B belt are grouped through a different belt part, so please refer to the assembly manual for a proper routing of this belt. Also, making sure that the belt didn't wrap against the frame or the plastic part, otherwise it may cause some premature wearing of the belt. Actually, you should try to make this belt as equal in length as possible before cutting the end off to make sure the tensioning of this belt are equal. Now I'm test fitting the print head part to make sure that this part are fit together perfectly. But the actual wiring has not been done yet. For the wiring direction, I use pencil chain design, which is printed piece by piece and joined together. I will leave a link in the video description below. After printing, you will need to remove the support and find the contact area to make the joint move freely. The chain link of the X and Y axis is identical. The only difference is in the ending part. The Y axis ending will have a single screw hole each side, but the X axis ending will have two screw holes each side. The C axis link is different. The chain link is higher and also one ending has a choice of long solid chain, which you can choose according to your print bed size. I'm using an ANET A8 printer, which can only print up to about 200 mm in size. If you are using a larger printer, you may choose a longer one instead. What I like about the Panzer chain is they're customizable, 
which means I can print the chain and the locker in a different color, which gives the printer a more distinctive look. And also, the chain has a wider curve radius, which should strain the wiring less than a standard direction. Alright, that's it for today. If you like this video, please consider hit the like button, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode. Thank you.